Welcome to the Homeschool Lounge. My guest is Marty Duplessis and the topic of conversation is uncapped education. Marty obtained a teacher's qualification and specialized in remedial education. For 11 years, she trained teachers and parents in the management of learning difficulties. In 1998, she started to home educate her daughter, now aged 33. She soon realized that home education families need guidance and assistance, and she started the Dynamis Institute. For more than two decades, she has guided families to a better understanding of each family member's learning preference and style, and informed them of the various approaches and curricula that will best suit their individual needs. Her focus is on integrating life and learning. Marty, you have been assisting home education families for many years now. How did it all start? Good evening, Anel. Thank you that I can be here. Yes, many years ago, my daughter asked me to be home educated. That was in 1998. And I started as a single parent and I also had to make a living. And I started to help homeschool families. And that's now many years it's now 2019 and I'm still doing it and so I have a whole collection and a whole journey a whole process of seeing families being uncapped over many years and the uncap is actually happening more in the parents than in the children and so yes it's a new name but it's actually something that's been done by many families overseas and then also in South Africa to bring hope and deliverance and healing to their families. And in this way, they are much better contributing to our society. What motivated you to develop a new education approach called Uncapped Education? On all in in the year 2004, I had a dream one night um, and a very clear vision that it will become difficult for families to uh, walk in this freedom that they have with regards to home educating their children. And I started to empower them to create a safe place for learning and living in their families. I very much focus on creating a space where there is a strong sense of belonging and worthiness and competencies and that the children would experience this in the home and that parents would invest in their children in such a way that by 14, uh, 14 15, 16, their children are accountable, responsible and having ownership of and responsibility. Um, about what they have learned and in such a way their parents can mentor them until they leave their homes and so thousands of families have started to understand that no matter what happens outside of our homes or in the economy or in life we have to create a safe place like Noah in their families. In 2016, I recorded many families, some of them were busy for about 10 to 15, some even 20 years um, ago that I started with home education and I found out from, from these families that most of them have done exactly the same principles. Uh, they've acted in this way. Uh, they said, Ons maak groot mense groot. We are raising adults that when they would go out into life, they would contribute to society. Their children could learn how to learn and their children love learning. And most of all, the children were thinking, uh, thinkers, and um, they were more, more, more wholehearted as children because the families were intentional about that. This um, reality really inspired me 
because I realized I was speaking the truth to families, that these simple principles brought liberty, uh, it brought uh, growth, it brought healing, and when these children would enter uh, into life, they are much more equipped for life. How do you know that this approach to home education truly assists families and that the child will receive a good education? Now, that is a very good question. How do you know if the guidance to parents are effective on the long term? For many years, I've been saying to parents that the parents are sacredly able just because God said so, just because they are parents. They're not a chair or a tree uh, they are parents and because they've got a heart for their children they want to grow them and uh, they want to send them out into this life to be effective and responsible adults and so it's the same with the teacher uh, teachers that love the child cares for the child uh, that love the subject and also want to see the growth of children they are sacredly able uh, teachers, but yes, where do we find uh, some of those teachers? Um, and that is why so many families, it's not actually in many instances their first choice to home educate their children, but they had to take their children out purely because of circumstances. And then the biggest doubt is can they do it? With saying to families that the parents are sacredly able, I say also that part of this task of the parent is to protect the vulnerability of the child. Now, if I can explain it with this spring, what vulnerability means, it means that um, when the vulnerability is not protected, there's a, a trauma or a scar or a painful situation that become like a trigger in a person's life. And um, Brene Brown has done research and she has proven that um, vulnerability is a very important uh, matter in education and in growing people. And that the person that's vulnerable can show up, they can show of themselves, they can take a risk, they are more creative, they are more innovative, and if you are not vulnerable or if you are not willing to show your vulnerability, you are hiding yourself, you armor yourself, and no one can see who you are. Uh, also from the studies about uh, grit, um, Christian Moore proved by testing 2 million people that protected vulnerability is actually a, a equals grit. Now grit means the child can be stretched and it can come back to its original position. Now you can see this is a, a thin spring. This is a much thicker spring but the one where there is trauma never come back to its original position and it actually acts from its painful position or the trigger. And so the task of the parent then is to protect the vulnerability of the child so that they have more grit. And grit is perseverance, it's passion, it's resilience, it is to um, have guts and that is now being tested by Andrew Duckworth which has done research with 16,000 people that actually this is what we need most to make it in life more than symbols more than talent and more than a matrix certificate even but that if the child is protected as a vulnerability. He, uh, vulnerability meaning the 
the true nature of the child, if that has been harmed in any way, this child is actually in a second position and uh, large companies pay a lot of money to help the members or the people in the business not to act from their triggers but to be healed from those triggers and so that is the when i when i read all this latest research and that is that those factors are more determining than academic results uh, i was very excited because that is exactly what i've been telling parents about having a house a safe house with his belonging, worthiness, and competence. Marty, how do we prepare our children for life? Another study that's been done by Harvard over 75 years with 48 people to determine what causes them to make it in life was their ability to receive love, to show love, to have empathy, and also a good work ethics. They show up when it's needed. They would have the roll up your sleeve attitude and they would just do what is needed. And so it's very simple that if we understand that it is not school books that would make or equip people for life, but what is done to their hearts and their ability to grow up as people with empathy, to grow up as secure people uh, that's loved and feel they belong and know that they can do a task. Those people with that security in themselves are the people that's contributing mostly to society but for that to happen uh, we need parents and adults to be re-educated and Drucker said many years ago the the biggest education in the future will be adult education so if I speak about uncap education I speak about educating adults and saying wake up it's not about books it's not about pouring things into your child's head but it's rescuing your child from unsafe situations and it is actually having an eagerness to uncap your child to take off all restrictions and limitations but if people are not aware of how their own triggers limit them and cause them to be restricted, they will not have an eagerness and a responsibility to create protected vulnerable people. Because even if your child is weaker or shyer or more conservative, they are more equipped for life purely because they do not have issues and hang-ups. And so the task of uncap education is to create a critical mass of people that say that we have been doing this education even though they haven't been home educated, even if they've just been uh, parents, godly parents that take their task as educators very seriously and they say but we've been guarding uh, our hearts of our children, um, you have done uncapped education uh, because you have not restricted your child and this kind of people is what we need in our country. Marty, have you done any research on home education families? And what are some of the common traits of home education families? 
Yes, Arnel, I have done quite a bit of research over uh, 20 years, and it's all documented, um, about the profile of the home educator or the parent that would take their children out of school. And most of these people are highly conscientious parents and uh, or people that say we want it to work and it is not working now. So the highly conscientious parent uh, uh, is a parent that actually would find it much easier to keep the child in school purely because these others that would do the task for them, they're not natural risk takers. Um, and these parents are concerned that their children are doing the right thing and that they are, as parents are doing the right thing. And so they would uh, help their children every afternoon with their homework until 8 o'clock in the evening um, so that uh, all is well with their families. Um, and that is the sad part for me that there's an attack on home educators where it's actually the more conscientious parents that are taking their children out of school. Um, if you just think how many parents and mothers would work extra jobs and extra hours for a good education for their children but are currently highly frustrated in the country because it is not going well and unless you can afford um, private schools you do not know what is going to be the outcome. The other research that I've done is also about what children, uh, what's the biggest number of children that's uh, doing home education and that is definitely, definitely the more sensitive child, sensitive, compassion, uh, uh, the child that actually uh, is more affected by outside circumstances and they cannot always protect themselves. Uh, it is so, as you heard, that their vulnerabilities should actually be protected even more as they cannot stand up for themselves. Some children can just fight and attack and... Um, uh, you know, when there's bullying or so, but not the very uh, sensitive and shy type of person. Now, that is because of this research that I've been doing, that I know that ANCAP education is not only describing what many families have been doing, but it's also an answer for education for our country. You are clearly passionate about education and the future. Anel, passionate about the future is an understatement. Um, when I couldn't see how I could take on such a big vision as a nation's education, um, or changes at least for some educational uh, uh, structures in the country, I felt that God gave me a very clear uh, command uh, when he said to me, um, invest in your grandchildren in such a way that you will know that they will be okay in 30 years. And I thought, oh my goodness, then they will be 41, 39, and so I go down, I've got six uh, grandchildren as well as some orphans, uh, children, foster children, and um, and I and I and I said, but how do I invest into their lives? But the fact that I have grandchildren as my biggest inspiration, because it is just representing representative from of many many people with children. And grandchildren, and I, and 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 I and I just had it in mind. How would it be for them, thirty years from now? I might not be here, but have I been faithful 
with what I can do about education and for them to have true education when they are there and their children. And that is why I am doing what I am doing so that it is possible for my grandchildren to educate their children in a country free of violence, free of discrimination. All those things that's been spoken out in 1994 and it's clearly not true at the moment in the country. And so let's stand together. Let's say that we want to uncap our children. We do not want restrictions on them. We want them to see the future in this nation.